Hi everyone, I'm Yeonsam Nim from uh, Sangshin Womanju University. In this talk, I'll talk about uh, fairness, our paper, uh, Fairness Audit of Machine Learning Models with Confidential Computing. Uh, nowadays, uh, as you know, nowadays uh, machine learning algorithms are being widely used for many kinds of applications which are automatically making decisions. So researchers have raised concerns about the bias and the discriminations uh, in uh, machine learning algorithms. So for example, bias the machine learning college admission system can reject a candidate because of uncontrollable traits such as gender and race. So we need to have some measure uh, for fa the fairness of machine learning models. So there are several fair fairness notions which are metrics to algorithmically measure the fairness of machine learning models, but suitable fairness notions are different according to the real world uh, scenarios. So uh, I'll talk about this uh, in the later slide. So in any, in any case, to build uh, a fair model, uh, there are several existing fairness toolkits, but the problem is that they are not considering uh, potential security issues in testing fairness. Let's look at bottom figures. So bottom figure is the pipeline of AI fairness 360 framework from IBM. So as you can see, they are doing a lot of things to get the fair outcomes from the trained model. But the question we have is how to securely certify and verify whether the trained model is fair. So we need to have some way to, uh, some secure way to audit fairness of machine learning models. But there are several issues in fairness audits. Uh, first, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the fairness problems are highly domain specific. So let's think about the college admission system and the online shopping mall. Then as you, uh, you can expect that there are totally different regulations and the rules applies to apply to these two applications. So we need to have different uh, definitions or notions of fairness, fairness. And while evaluating the fairness of machine learning models, we need to have access to the sensitive attributes such as gender and race. And as you know, there are strict restrictions on the collection and the use of this kind of information. So we need to resolve this issue in fairness audit. And to per while performing the fairness audit procedure, uh, we need to have a trust relationship, relationship between participating uh, entities. So somebody is inspecting the uh, fairness of machine learning models uh, of some others. So these two entities, uh, should have some trust relation, relationship because uh, while doing the fairness audit procedure, maybe some information needs to be uh, disclosed uh, to each other. So let's talk about the deployment scenario uh, in which we are considering uh, in this paper. So we assume that there are four partic participating entities uh, in fairness audit procedure. So first one is a modeler. So modeler is, uh, is building a model for their service and they want to get the fairness certificate while protecting the, protecting the secret of models. And there is a regulator uh, who is uh, evaluating the fairness of machine learning models and issuing a uh, fairness certificate. And third entity is client. So client will use machine learning API from the modeler, but they want to use trustworthy and the fair API while preserving data privacy and the confidentiality. And the last entity is uh, data owners. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, to evaluate the fairness, we need to have some data set with sensitive information. So we call it as uh, validation data. So we assume that uh, data owners will provide validation data to the regulator so we can expect that we need to have a secure channel uh, between regulator and the data owners to protect uh, data privacy and the confidentiality. Then let's look at the potential threats and the challenges in under this scenario. So first, at the modeler side, uh, the most important problem is model confidentiality. 
uh, we assume that in this paper, we assume that a uh, modeler does not trust a regulator. So this model confidentiality can be broken by mistrustful regulator or this guy's attacker. And at the regulator side, a uh, regulator does not trust a uh, model, modeler as well. So modeler can cheat fairness, fairness or the procedure. So for example, during the fairness evalu evaluation, uh, modeler just use fair model, but for the actual service, they can use unfair model. So in the case, a uh, regulator will be cheated. And there, even data owner uh, can be compromised. So if data owners uh, is compromised, then the validation data can be corrupted. I mean, uh, validation data will have some poison sensitive information. Then in the case, uh, regulators uh, fairness test based on such uh, corrupted validation data will become incorrect. And at the data owner side, uh, uh, data owner want to protect their sensitive data set, as I mentioned in the, uh, mentioned in the previous slide. So we need to uh, set up the secure channel between regulator and the uh, data owners. And at the client side, uh, there might be uh, malicious uh, modelers. So malicious modeler manipulate the fairness certificate without a uh, regulator and provide unfair machine learning API to client. So uh, it will be certification forgery. And while using the machine learning API, client is submitting some data to the uh, API. So we need to protect this client data as well. So we need to uh, ensure the data pri privacy and the confidentiality uh, for our client as well. So these are uh, summary of the potential threats and the challenges under our scenario. So we, are, we will resolve these challenges uh, by using uh, confidential computing. So confidential computing is a paradigm to protect data in use using hardware-based trust e execution environment. So by using confidential computing, applications keeps uh, their data and code uh, inside hardware-based enclave. So encrypted data are decrypted only in enclave and only authorized application can access these kinds of information. So unauthorized application, even such as operating system cannot access this uh, data. So uh, through confidential computing, we can achieve both practicality and the security. Then the goal of our paper is like this. We will make a framework uh, for certifying and the verifying uh, the fairness of the confidential computing, uh, a confidential machine learning models while protecting uh, data privacy. Uh, it will be based on the features uh, from the confidential uh, computing. So this is the overview of our fairness of the framework. So with our framework, uh, modeler will obtain fairness certificate without losing model confidentiality. And regulator will do a secure data, data aggregation for collecting validation data. And using that validation data, uh, regulator can do fairness auditing. And client will be able to uh, use a verified uh, fair model while, while preserving uh, privacy. So bottom figure is the entire process in our framework. It looks complicated. Uh, let me explain uh, our design point on by, one by one in later slide. So our first design is utilizing uh, enclave remote attestation. So the uh, enclave remote attestation is procedure to attest TE-based software learning on a remote platform. Uh, this is to check the integrity of the learning codes and data in hardware uh, in clay. So this, uh, by doing this, we will guarantee model confidentiality and the credibility of the machine learning API. So let's look at the example uh, remote attestation between regulator and the modeler. So regulator will send remote attestation request. Then modeler will compute uh, locally compute enclave integrity information uh, like this, then just send it back to the regulator uh, as a response. Then actually the original uh, enclave integrity information, uh, this is something like hash, is registered to the central server. Uh, in the case of the Intel SGX, it will be Intel attestation service. So by comparing the registers, registered integrity info with a uh, received one, 
uh, regulator can check the integrity of the machine learning inference enclave like this. So in this case, modeler cannot swap machine learning API to cheat the fairness audit. And second design uh, point is array-based secure channel. So uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we need to have some secure channels between some participating entity. So by extending this remote attestation procedure with cryptographic protocols, we can establish an uh, encrypted channel between these kind of uh, uh, entities. And third design point is public scrutiny of the regulator's auditing court. So this is to certify the authenticity of the fairness auditing enclave. So this is simply uh, make regulator cause enclave has signer's identi identity uh, in public. Then uh, others just utilize this information to validate the authenticity of the fairness audit procedure. So uh, regulator is just putting the, all these kind of information into public repository, then others just uh, utilize this information. So if the integrity of the auditing procedure becomes broken, then others uh, promptly recognize it uh, by comparing this public information with, with what they are getting. And first design point is chain of trust for verifying fairness certificate. So on our framework, uh, regulator is, uh, issues fairness certificate and model store it as a hard-coded credential. Uh, we call it as a manifest. And by putting this hard-coded manifest, we can uh, verify uh, this manifest using the remote attestation. So if a uh, manifest is broken, then remote attestation will fail. But if not, then remote attestation a remote attestation will uh, success. Then uh, with, uh, with successful uh, remote attestation, client can send verification request with this manifest to the regulator, then regulator, regulator will validate the fairness certificate. So if there is some mismatches, then client can refuse to use uh, model. And our fifth uh, design point is enclave uh, model compilation and the sandboxing. Uh, this is to separate machine learning inference code base into two parts. Uh, one, first one is public and second one is private. Uh, public part is this general tool for the compilation and the enclave sandboxing. And private part is uh, something like uh, <clears throat> model parameter and some details about models. So this is this should be excluded uh, from the attestation boundary for uh, model confidentiality. So we implement uh, our uh, framework a proto as a prototype using these setups. So we utilize Intel SGX and uh, this kind of library and uh, this kind of hardware and uh, software setups. And we've tested our framework, uh, our prototype using these five data sets which are well-known uh, data set for the machine learning experiment. Then we evaluate the machine learning uh, algorithms uh, from log logistic regression to the pair neural uh, networks, these five, net, uh, uh, five algorithms. And we compute, uh, we deal with uh, these uh, fairness notions, uh, uh, these four fairness notions, which are well-known fairness notions in this field. So I will skip details about uh, and detail uh, is about this, but I uh, just uh, look at this, uh, refer these equations. Then let's look at the computation overhead uh, of the, our framework. So as you can expect, because we are adding some things, uh, definitely we can expect some overhead. So in, we so we investigate the fairness certificate pump, uh, certification performance using fair logistic regression. So with the uh, large data set, let's look at the result. So bottom table is listing the certification time, uh, which is time to complete certification. And the baseline means uh, without uh, confidential computing, I mean, just uh, 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 algorithm as it is. And SGX means uh, with our framework. Then as you can see, uh, uh, this is uh, listing the certification time in the unit of milliseconds. We can see that uh, with our framework, it, uh, it takes uh, around 10 milliseconds more. So it is six to five percent, uh, nine percent, uh, 10 percent of, 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 of overhead. But in the case of the small data set, we can see that uh, the overhead proportion of the overhead becomes larger. Uh, now it's up to 25 percent. 
So we can see that as the size of the data set becomes larger, then CPU time for parent certification dominate SGX overhead. And we also compare uh, we also compare the legacy compare with the legacy MPC based approach. Uh, this uh, this is from the other paper, but they are using a similar setting with us. Then we see that numbers like this. So to compute DI for German, uh, this MPC based approach is taking two hundred fifty milliseconds, and for adults it is taking eight hundred milliseconds. We can see that they are uh, they have they they it takes much it is much larger than our uh, our numbers. And we also investigate the end-to-end -end inference throughput uh, uh, with five algorithms for two data sets. Then we can see similar results to the previous slide. So here, logistic regression um, is less computation intensive than neural network or support beta machine. So we can see that a pattern figure is uh, showing the inference time uh, for the uh, different algorithms on different data. Then we can see that as the model becomes more computation intensive, I mean SVM or neural networks, the proportion of the SGX overhead becomes less. So here overhead is around uh, 20%, but in the case of a simpler algorithm, I mean uh, less computation intensive algorithm, then we can see that the overhead uh, proportion is more than 60%. Professor Lim, you have less than one minute. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, in this work, we propose a novel fairness audit framework incorporating uh, confidential computing technology to address security issues such as privacy and the confidentiality. So our framework is flexible for various fairness notions and extendable for other machine learning models. So this is the uh, end of my presentation. Uh, any questions? Thank you very much. Let's thank Professor Lim once more. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? I have one quick question, one clarification yeah. question. On a slide 29, could you please go back to, to slide 29? Yep. Yes. Uh, I wonder why, I, I, I think I missed this, the, the part where you explained the, large, the differences between the large and the small data sets. Why is that? Why is, do you get a uh, higher overhead with the small data sets? Do you have an so intuition actually, why? As, as, uh, you, you can think SGX overhead is something like a small fixed number. Then uh, for the large data set, we need to, uh, we need to uh, spend more time to compute, actually compute the, uh, these metrics. And, uh, and there is just fixed amount of, amount of uh, overhead from the SGX. Okay. Uh, understand then, uh, then if uh, this uh, here, uh, maybe just for the computation, uh, for the computation, uh, Computing these kind of uh, fairness notions, just taking yeah two point four, then there's a fixed amount of uh overhead from the SGX, uh, maybe around yeah less than yeah uh, one milliseconds yeah like that. Okay, okay, thank you. It's not actually a fixed one, but yeah, it it it's not increasing linearly as a function okay. of uh, instance. Yeah. Okay. 